Slaves here with the Senior Pickleball Report powered by TNC Network. Let's get it going. Today we have the honor of speaking with Jose Derisi, senior pro player, top 10 senior pro player. He's been on the podiums and the biggest stages in pickleball, the PPA Tour, the APP Tour, the U.S. Open. He is a certified instructor as well as a playing pro, and he's going to be one of the new stars in the National Pickleball League, which is for senior players 50 plus coming this spring and summer. So stay tuned. Here's our interview with Jose. Okay. Hey, welcome to the Senior Pickleball Report, Jose. Glad to have you here, man. Glad to be here with you here, Mike. Uh, glad to be in the Senior Pickleball Report. Um, let's start with this weekend, this past weekend, um, a gold and a bronze. That's a, a pretty good start to 2023. So talk a little bit about that and what your expectations are for 2023. Well, that was a great start of the year. Uh, it was the APP Punta Gorda in Florida. I got gold with Eva Walcher um, in mixed, and I got uh, bronze with Paul Allen uh, in uh, senior men's. So very exciting tournament, a uh, lot of good teams. I would say weather was cold, unusually cold yeah. for Punta Gorda. It was in the high 30s at one point when we played oh, wow. the gold medal match. So that was freezing, but uh, at night. Uh, with that cold, but uh, it was fun. A lot of good teams. I think there were like uh, all the participants. We were like around like 800 players or so in all the divisions, yeah. all the brackets. Uh, so great start of the year. Um, I play with Eva Walsher. This is my second tournament. Uh, she's great. She's one of the yeah. top uh, senior pro women. Very energetic, fun, talented. Um, Fortunately for me, we're going to play uh, a few more this year. And yeah. uh, based on this, we're going to add uh, even more. So very exciting for me to play again with Eva. And then with Paul, uh, this is the first time we played. Paul Olin, great player oh. uh, in, in all brackets. Uh, we play against each other many times. So for me, uh, luckily, I had him on the same side of the court this time, uh, and we had a great run. Um, we lost the first game, the first match, and then we had to come back a uh, long day, oh. and uh, we, yeah. we made it to bronze. Uh, right so it was a, a long battle. You, you talked a little bit about Eva, who I'm actually going to interview in a couple of days, so I'm excited about that. Um, and also, uh, you know, obviously you two, both um, high energy players, and then the opposite, sort of with Paul. Paul's very cerebral in his approach. Yes, and you and you are you live and die on every every moment. It seems like out there. So talk a little <laughs> bit about that that relationship. <laughs> yeah. So with with Eva, uh, before we started the tournament, uh, we knew one thing for sure: we would be the loudest team on the tournament. Uh, we. <laughs> Yeah. We wanted to win, and hope, and uh, uh, we did. Fortunately, uh, um, again, great, great teams, great battles. But yeah. I think we we, we complement each other, and I think we this it's a personality thing. We are not trying to like act or anything like that. Right. Uh, this is how how we see it. Uh, it's like how we get energy. Um, so yeah, we have great chemistry with with Eva. Um, so even though we are like very, uh, you know, we show our emotions, let's say, as we play, uh, we like to talk also about the game as we play. Yeah. And, and she is very uh, analytical too uh, during a game, which is key because the like, teams are changing how they play oh, yeah. based on the results. We change strategy uh, during the game based on what we see, what's working or not. Uh, so... It's great when you have a partner like that. Both of my partners, both Eva and Paul are like that. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are, some people don't like to talk during the game. Mm -hmm. Nothing good or bad. I prefer people like uh, Eva and Paul that like to talk during the games, um, see what's working, what not. Um, I'm vocal, very vocal as well. So that is I love something it. that I enjoy. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And a pickleball is fun. So I like to live, play pickleball like that. Uh, most people enjoy that, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's fun. And of course, sometimes things get a little loud, but of course, it's for us, for our team. Nothing is personal. Um, yeah. That's how I get energy and how my teammates get energy. Uh, right. So it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I mean, I love watching you. I love watching Rick Witzkin. I love watching when you play against Dave Weinbach. I love when you play against Dane. <laughs> it gets it gets very chippy, as I would say sometimes. Um, but I know at the end of the day, you know, you see photos of you guys, and you you, you know, you guys seem to all kind of be in a, a, a hangout group, and you're you, you seem very family like as the as the senior group and uh, as the you know on the app and um and I, I, that's why i'm excited about this league so talk a little bit about playing amongst uh, really in some levels your friends um yes. and, and doing battle week to week 100 percent. and i'm glad you asked that question because sometimes if you see a video and and of course at the end of the match it's over it may seem that because it got chippy uh people yeah. are not they don't like each other um uh, right. Today, literally, I was sharing notes uh, about the tournaments and experiences with um, Dane Gingrich about the yeah. PPA in the West Coast. I play in Florida, as we said, but there was right. a PPA tournament in um, the West. I think it was in California. Mission Hills. Uh, yeah, Mission Hills Country Club or something. Yeah. So we were sharing notes with my great friends and competitors but friends yeah. uh dane gingrich and scott crandall um yeah. of course i talk with rick uh witzkin all the time mm -hmm. and i was chatting with dave weinbach also this morning whether or not we're going to change one tournament from an app to ppa based on some yeah. moving landscapes that we can touch yeah. later um uh, but yeah and when i play against dave Things get, I know how he is. He knows how I am. And, uh, yeah. but it's all fun. At the end of the day, it's all good. We both want to win. He lives, you know, he plays very passionately. Uh, right. We even talk to each other during the, uh, after the points. Uh, but yeah. it's a playful banter. Uh, and we just, after the game, we're all like hanging out together. Um, and we right. play with and against each other all the time. That's the thing is, is planning the year out. That's got to be one of the more yes. complex things to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and because also what happened is like last year we have a landscape for senior pros and that changed right. quickly at the end yeah. of last year. Right. So we are still trying to put, uh, those pieces to it and see what tournaments we're going to play. I know some people are changing based of on, on what happened, basically how the tools yeah. changed some of the incentives for seniors. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's get into um, when it became the champions tour and obviously the whole landscape changing with the PPA and MLP and obviously y'all bringing in the national pickleball league. Um, it seems that every week there is a brand new piece of news. Um, some of it controversial, some of it, not some of it fun. So um, it, it seems to be like sort of a tug of war at times, but in whiplash, a combination of, you know, where am I going to end up and how's it going to look? So talk about your feelings about that and uh, what you'd like to see happen as far as seniors go. Yeah, I think let me start by saying that uh, for our audience here in this uh, senior pickable report that I follow and I love and thank you for your well, thank uh, you. Jo job here, Mike. It's very exciting to have, uh, you know, like a channel like yours that covers and focuses on, on our game, on the senior pickleball mm -hmm. report. It's great. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so I would say uh, for our audience, the most exciting thing for this year, 2023, by far, is the National Pickleball League. Here, this is what yeah, I have. Man. This is what I'm wearing. <laughs> right uh, on. So, for the people that don't know, let me do a little intro. Uh, yeah, this please. is a league. It's a team league organized uh, for um, from a uh, senior person themselves. Like the yeah. top organizers are Rick Witzkin, mm -hmm. Beth Bellamy, 
Tom right. DiCaprio and okay. uh, Michael Chen, all of them senior pros. Uh, and it's going to, they, what I will say is information is coming in weekly uh, right. on the NPL. So follow them in social media. But uh, what is happening is like they announced that they're going to have six teams of 20 players each. So a total of 120 senior pros. This is a professional right. league for seniors. Um, right. The events are going to be held at Chicken and Pickles. Awesome. Which is a great, great location. So yes, it is. Know, there is no issues with rain, sun, no. anything. <laughs> there are great facilities. People can hang out, eat something, have something to yeah. drink, enjoy themselves. Where there are like nice facilities as well. Whether you are playing or you are going there to watch, I understand that there there are going to be events. So there might be some. Uh, you know, clinics associated with it. So it's going to be a destination right, right. for seniors. So very exciting, not just a tournament. Um, the events will start in June and they will end up in October with a championship. Um, people can apply. I think if you're 4.5 and up, uh, right. can apply to see if you're going to be drafted. And the draft is going to happen in the spring at a date right. to be announced. And I think or so far many um of the top pros if not all have signed already mm -hmm. uh for the league and then there is another number of people that will be included uh based on i think they're going to do a tournament rick mentioned last time in social media that maybe they're doing a tournament um just to see who's going to get in so that is another yeah. opportunity yeah. for people Right, four point five, five O's, and so on to play the tournament and get into this league. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a team events like MLP like, but for senior, so this is I would say by far the most exciting. I'm very excited about this, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, that that's the NPL. Um, right. Then, as as far as the two tours, I would say last year. For senior pros, by far the most exciting tour was the APP. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the most of us were playing basically most of the tournaments there, and the PPA, not that much. Yeah. Uh, that landscape is shifting a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens this year. Uh, yeah. It's to be determined yet. Uh, I think there's a lot of moving pieces. But um, I think at this point, it's open. Um, yeah. it's, I don't know if it's going to be like last year, like APPs mostly. Maybe it's mm -hmm. going to be a combo of APPs and PPAs uh, for senior pros. Um, okay. But uh, that's, that's where we are at, at the moment. Right on. Yeah, I mean, that's super exciting. I mean, I, the, the, the league itself is, I think, a huge leap forward for senior pros. And, and if anybody is not really... Um, got an opportunity to watch senior pro pickleball. It's incredible. Um, the, it, the intensity, and yet you can feel like we talked earlier, the camaraderie of it's not all, you know, sort of an end all uh, or a zero sum game. It's, uh, it's people who are friends, but who have, um, who have lived life, who have, who have uh, had successful careers in other things in other areas and who are doing it because they love to compete and not necessarily because they want to always just, you know, try and make a living at that. And I'm not saying there aren't people that are out there not like that, but at the same time, you can feel sort of the different vibe about senior pro ball than you can on what I would call the open pro tour. It's, 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 I don't know. It's a cool little family kind of fun, but man, y'all can compete. <laughs> well, 100%. And I agree with that. And there's a lot of, in senior pro, you have people with different backgrounds because we are like 50 plus. Um, right. So that is absolutely true. Uh, like you have like former professional tennis players to choose on a sport. Like this weekend, I played against my good friend, Jaime on scenes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who is another top senior pro. And um, he used to be, I don't want to say the exact number, but around yeah. like 60 something in the world in tennis right he beat right. ivan lendl uh in roland <laughs> at his time so 
not too shabby there. No, um, not at all. <laughs> hey, if you're looking for very, very comfortable court shoes, in fact, the most comfortable court shoes I've ever worn, and I've worn a lot of them over the years playing different sports, try Fitville. We have a link in the description that gets you 20 bucks off your purchase. There are so many uh, top senior, former senior uh, pro tennis players. I mentioned yeah. like Beth Bellamy, she's one of them, Nathalie yeah. Bagby. Uh, but right. There are so many top that are there. So it is so fun for me thinking about that I'm playing, that I was playing this weekend <laughs> against these guys. Uh, right, right. The final, <laughs> when I played with Eva, uh, yeah. We play against uh, Beth Bellamy and uh, Jaime and Zines. Right. So, that was so fun serious for me. Resumes. Yeah, serious yeah. resumes. Serious <laughs> resumes. Serious resumes. I was going to say, like, so let's talk about your background. Let's talk about your origin story to pickleball, what sports background you came to to compete at this level. Um, you know, because it's no joke. You're playing against people who have played in, you know, um, majors in tennis um, and, and, and winning. So talk about where, where you've come from and how you came to the sport. So I am originally from Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, I played tennis there, you know, somehow competitive level until I was like 15 years old or so um, mm -hmm. at club level. Um, and some of the people were starting to like travel at my age. Uh, I'm playing like, you know, regional tournaments uh even right. you know in our countries um so i was like kind of that level but I, then i did not continue to play i just mm -hmm. didn't want to do it um um and i just play once in a while uh but just yeah. more recreational um and then i did not play for a few years tennis um went to college kind of stopped playing there and then um, later on, I picked another racket sport called uh, padel. Um, oh, yeah. So I played padel. It was very popular at one point there in Argentina. Yeah. I think it's very popular in some places in Europe still. Mm -hmm. And somehow in the U.S. it's like slowly coming in, uh, but nowhere near pickleball. I, I played that for a, maybe a couple of years and then I just stopped, but yeah. always part-time nothing uh, serious it was fun mm -hmm. there was like yeah. a small professional league i play there too um mm -hmm. and then kind of stopped doing sports for a while and then okay. here in rochester i would say six or seven years ago i was at a party and somebody said hey have you heard of pickleball i said what's <laughs> that right uh oh <laughs> so i just like many people say, what is that is a weird name, but um, right, right. They, they show me in YouTube. Somebody was very excited about pickleball. That person said, well, come with us. Typical story. We all become ambassadors of pickleball in a way right. after we play. Uh, and I say, yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Play for the first time indoors here in Rochester. And I loved it. It was like... Yeah immediate uh love for pickleball <laughs> yeah i went the next day and i would say i play here for um rochester new york which is like really upstate new york um yeah. for i would say two or three years but uh not competing and we had a couple of pros here like younger pros in the area at that time my good friends like rob cassie and uh and another one like my Remincy, who was living here at that time and Somehow, I think it was Maggie, she didn't have a partner and say, do you want to play yeah. like a real tournament in New Jersey? I said, yeah, let's go. First time, went there, played with Rob and Maggie. So great partners I had. Yeah, nice uh, start. <laughs> yeah, lucky guy. So um, we did great. Uh, I think we won with Rob. Uh, that was my yeah. first like real tournament. I would say probably like, maybe uh four or five years ago um okay and then uh with my we did great but i think we came fourth but um yeah yeah it was it was super fun and since then i said like oh trams are great because i had the bag of playing pickleball but then <laughs> you know the second wave of having the bag is like tournaments 
So that's right. what I tell people. Right, right. First, you get in love with playing pickleball in your area, <laughs> friends, and so on. But once you start playing tournaments and travel for tournaments, that is the second wave. And I, I encourage agree. everybody here to play I tournaments. Agree. Tournaments are so fun. Uh, you meet, it's very social at any level. Um, you meet a lot of people that you would not meet otherwise. Uh, right. You make a lot of friends. Um, and, and Pickable has somehow this magic that you can make kind of friends very quickly, even yeah. at our yeah. age, that I right. would say we would not, I don't know if I would be friends with those people if it wasn't for Pickable. Pickable like, brings us together. There is some magic there. I don't know what is it, but you immediately become so close to those people uh, when you play Pickable. It's just, I agree. brings us together. It is so good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you hit it on the right on the nail on the head there. Uh, I have a community of people way out here in rural New Mexico that it's a valley of about 300 people and about 20 of us play pickleball on these dilapidated tennis courts um, that we put lines and temporary nets. And we come from all walks of life, all ideologies, but we just we just love playing pickleball a couple of days a week and just chatting between points. And, and some of us are getting into tournaments and you, you learn a great deal about what your weaknesses are when you play in tournaments, <laughs> um, which yes, I'm finding absolutely. out at the moment. So that's where, that's the stage I'm in. I, I played my first tournament about a year ago, singles. Um, I did fine. You know, I, I think I went 500 on the day, which was like, Oh, I, I beat some people. And then I, I started jumping into, uh, the doubles world, which is uh, a whole lot more for me thinking process than just reacting to hitting the open shot, um, than singles would be. So, uh, that's what I'm working on right now. I got a ball machine. So, you know, it's, it's, it's taking hold of me and, uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, uh, but yeah, I love playing tournaments. I'm going to try and play in more this year and attend more because just going to tournaments, um, I've learned a great deal by just watching, uh, people that you want to eventually get to play against and maybe beat someday. So I, that's why I watch players like you, because not only are you entertaining to watch, you play the game in a way that I think is sort of, I would call it on the cutting edge of what's coming. You play in a very, you play a very aggressive game and the game that kind of um, was, which is a lot more patience and a lot more um, dinking the ball around. And I'm not saying you don't do that, but when you get an opening, you go. And um, I, that's what I need to get to a, a point is playing. I played a lot of beach volleyball in my past, but I was a guy that just hit a lot of shots. I wasn't tall. Right. I could just outlast people. Um, but in this game, I'm finding that, you know, patience is good to a point, but at some time you get a risk and, and bring some heat. Um, and that's, that's what I enjoy about your game. So talk a little bit thank about you. that Th maybe. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I agree. I like to use the word discipline more than patient. Patience to me seems a little passive, but mm -hmm. I like yeah. to see like if a ball is not a tackle and that is a definition that changes over time, a ball that was sure. not a tackle <laughs> a year ago today is an attackable ball. Yeah, uh, just so some technology. Is, yeah, <laughs> type of players coming in. Yeah. How we conceive the game. So that is a right. fluid definition, and, and we have to be, be current how we interpret that definition. If not, we end up playing pickleball of what pickleball <laughs> was two years ago. Right, right. Right, and I think going with the game, uh, it's key. So I, I like to play like that and, and see, like I like to study the game when mm -hmm. I go and see the game. Uh, I watch, when I play tournaments, you know, I'll see my opponents. Um, and I see the, the top pros also playing there. And what yeah. is like, um, how they see the game, where the game is going. And the game is only going one way. It's getting yeah. more aggressive, uh, yes. more physical, uh, and that's it, more aggressive, no question. Now, aggressive yeah. doesn't mean no patience to your point. It's like right. uh, just um, w one topic that I like uh, and I think it's very hot at the moment that maybe people can think about it. It's like court coverage. So yeah. what are you doing when you don't have the ball? 
Right. So when you don't have the ball, you are playing as well. Yeah. It's not you're yes. sitting waiting to see what happens. <laughs> right. Right. So how you make the court smaller for the opponent based on where you are placed in the court, how you cut the angles. Uh, and by doing that with aggressive court positioning, you are forcing the opponent to hit the ball where you wanted to hit them, like a low right. percentage shot. So you leave that piece of the court open in a way. So if they want to go there, it's a low percentage shot. So by definition, they're going to miss many of them because yeah. it's a low percentage. Right. And you cover the higher percentage shots for them. So if they decide to attack there, it will help you defense-wise because you are covering that part. And if the attack is not great, you can counterattack very quickly. So you go yeah. from court coverage, kind of defensive wide wise, and into explosion mode and counterattack quickly. But that requires a few things. But one is aggressive and smart court coverage. If yeah. not, it's very difficult. It's sort of like moving from checkers to chess to go. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I, I like to use court coverage. Uh, I think that's kind of a hot topic at the moment. Um, and then, you know, just um, move the ball. Try to be a little unpredictable. Uh, yeah. So people are always wondering what is that you're going to do. And right. uh, that requires to see where they are, uh, the opponents, uh, what are they expecting, and to have a series of shots that you can do with the same ball. Um, and at the last minute, it's deception. I think at a high level, we can see pick a ball. It's a game between deception when you have the ball versus anticipation when you right. are going to receive the ball. So whoever has the best anticipation or deception is going to win the game. That's another way right. to see it. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, for deception, you have your shot has to look the same until the last second, and then you might have you may hit two or three balls with the same looking shot. Right. Yeah, and sort of hanging uh, and holding the ball to the last second sometimes. Right. Yes. Yes. And 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 have it in our head because we all know that you know we can love, but we sure. don't use it as much sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the concept that we can love, but we don't use it. Um, that often, um, yeah. you know, we, we can speed balls at some areas, but we don't necessarily use it. We tend to hit sometimes similar shots all the time. And then people yeah. start to anticipate us and our, sh our game kind of shrinks right. to those shots. And I think the idea is to expand and, uh, and for that, we need to, to practice. And when we play games, uh, not tournaments, uh, just like, experiment with these shots so you go right for a game and say okay this this game i want to practice you know really a lot of loves uh yeah. loves i recommend lobbing the ball out of the kitchen and out of the air when the four players out of the kitchen uh, an offensive love that is okay right and you just go there and practice uh that yeah. game how it works and then yeah. you are in our game and practice drives on the third right or aggressive right drops from the third or aggressive serves and things like that and see right. how it works uh yeah and so when you play a tournament you can you know all some of these things are already incorporated and natural uh in your game and right. you don't have to like right. overthink how to hit the shot right that's excellent advice and uh I'm, I'm trying to apply that to my own game um daily trying to practice more when I play, um, as well, uh, not counting, not, not thinking about winning rec games so much, but actually trying to accomplish some work and, uh, some, some of the shots that you're talking about in the game. So, um, let's wrap, wrap this up for you. So let's talk about, um, a little bit about what you what you'd like to accomplish this season as a player and, um, mention your sponsors and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you back to your day. Fantastic. So, I want to say thank you to my sponsors, Engage Pickable. Uh, I've been with Engage uh, for a number of years now. It has been my uh, primary sponsor for uh, paddles and yeah. gear and so on. Uh, it's, I play with the Pursuit EX. Uh, it's a fantastic paddle. I love it. 
uh, gives me a lot of uh, power and control. Um, so I loved it. Um, yeah. And then I play here in Rochester with in a facility called Dinkers Pickleball. So if you are okay. around the area in Rochester, New York, I encourage to visit us. I teach cl clinics and lessons, group lessons there, Dinkers Pickleball. And then um, I also want to say thank you to my friends here uh, in the Rochester area, partners that helped me with some of this stuff. Uh, I would say that the Valenti family has been very um, yeah. helpful to me. Um, what I would like to accomplish, I think for 2023, my main goal is like just to, um, you know, I'm looking forward for the NPL because this yeah. is uh, the, the, the team event for seniors, because I think this is going to be something that is, it's basically for seniors only focus on us. Uh, and I think it's going to be a great product. The team event is something new for seniors we mm -hmm. so far, but the team event as the N MLP proved is a fantastic product. Um, yeah. It's very entertaining. And very. you will see matchups that you haven't seen uh, so far in tournaments. <laughs> yeah. That, that, like that is a unique thing because people tend to play sometimes uh, with some of the players, uh, but you will see people playing against each other that you have not seen, uh, matchups that you have not seen. And uh, I know some of the personalities there yeah. at display, uh, which are great in team events. Uh, and the opportunity for many of the seniors, 120 literally, to be part of yeah, this Yeah, that's team. a lot of people. Uh, so I really encourage everybody to you know, follow MPL and social media and, uh, you know, stay tuned for more announcements because they are coming weekly, how to join, right. uh, how to be drafted and um, how to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Basically. yeah. It, it, it's super exciting. And uh, I, I can't wait to see it and uh, attend an event um, and uh, meet you in person, hopefully sometime. That'd be great as well. So I appreciate your time and uh, I appreciate what you do on the court. It's incredible. And uh, best of luck in 2023. And uh, hey, man, don't be a stranger. Love to have you back on sometime. Thank you very much. Thank you for the senior pickable report and everything you do. I follow you. It's, it's, it's very interesting what, how you cover uh, this aspect of pickable. And um, see you soon again. Hope you enjoyed our interview this week with Jose. If you like this content, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, check out our socials as well, our merch page. If you're looking to upgrade your paddle, there's a link in the description for just paddles. And if you're looking for great shoes, link in the description for Fitville and check out PCKL Pickle Paddles, great paddle company um, on the rise, brand new. So, hey, don't forget, let's pickle. Hey, if you're looking for very, very comfortable court shoes, in fact, the most comfortable court shoes I've ever worn, and I've worn a lot of them over the years playing different sports, try Fitville. We have a link in the description that gets you 20 bucks off your purchase.